Y'all can put your hands together.
God for our musicians and the man I praised him. Amen. They're doing a good job in the time of the pandemic. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. God bless all of you. We welcome all of our visitors that are here. Some of them from real far away. Come today. Be with us in the house of the Lord. We thank God for you, you, and especially you who are here present in the house of God today. This is a day that the Lord has made. Amen. And he, hallelujah. hallelujah. He allowed us to come together one more time. Yes, yes. Amen. He's good. He's wonderful. And I give him praise. I give him honor. And I give him glory. Amen. We also welcome our live streaming audience who tune us in every Sunday. Amen. They are, some of them live pretty far away too. But yet they tune in our broadcasts. And we thank God for that. Also, we want to thank God for our radio broadcast that goes out every Sunday morning at 8.30, 8.30 to 9.30 on WGRI, amen, 10.50 and FM 103.1. And we're out there. Our programs are out there. And even those who cannot get to the house of God, we're trying to reach them trying to give them a portion of God's word so that they can be fed. Man cannot live by bread alone, but he must live by everything that comes from the mouth of God. Today we're going to stand, as we usually do, in prayer. And we're going to ask everyone to stand where you are. And it's prayer time in the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have a prayer request that you would like to make, we invite you to lift your hands up for your prayer request. And we're gonna to pray to the Lord that he will do what you are asking him to do. And then we're going to, amen, pray for the message today and pray for the service today that the Lord will bless somebody to hear the word and to believe the word Amen. And that the word will do what it always does do. It will take care of the situations that are in your lives. Let us pray. Father God, I come before you on this beautiful day that you have given to us. I thank you for every soul that is present here in the sanctuary. Thank you that for those that are in the live streaming audience. And I thank you for those who listen to us on WGRI. I pray, Lord, that you will help them in a very special manner. I pray that you will look down upon us. You know what we stand in need of, and thou art able to supply that need according to your riches in glory. We want to see your glory in this service today. We want to see you come by and do special things for us today. Hallelujah. We invite you in to Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church today. Bless your word as it goes forth and bless your servant to deliver it to the people. Touch sick bodies and heal them. Touch, hallelujah, those who are sick and heal them by the power of God. Bless the words of your servant today and whether there are many or few, we pray that your blessings will be upon them. Bless us and use us for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us turn in the Bible for our scripture reading while you still remain standing. And it is found in the book of Psalms. Psalm 34 verse 15 through 19. Psalm 34, verse 15 through 19. When you have it, say amen. amen. Let us read together. I will bless the Lord at all time. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I read some extra verses, but that's okay, right? We're going to preach them anyway. <laughs> Amen. The key verse that the Lord gave me this week to share with you is verse 19 of Psalm 34, which says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And the subject for today is the promises of deliverance. <coughs> the promises of deliverance. No matter what you're going through today and no matter what is happening in your life today, God has promised to bring us out. Amen. I do not see God's people down all the time. I do not see them sick all the time. I do not see them grieved all the time. I do not see them in hardship all the time. Because we have a God that is high, but he looks low at the people, hallelujah, that are in these situations. Hallelujah. And eventually, eventually, he may not come when you want him, but eventually, <laughs> he may not show up when you ask, seek, and knock, but hallelujah, eventually, he will come and deliver you. Hallelujah. The chief character of our sermon today is David. David was the author of Psalm 34. And in the caption it said it was when he changed his behavior before Abimelech who drove him away and he departed. Hallelujah. This is talking about David when David had fled from Saul because he wanted to kill him. Hallelujah. David had to flee for his life because them little sisters, hallelujah, was singing the wrong song. Hallelujah. <laughs> them little Israelite sisters that saw David coming back from the battle with Goliath sang the wrong song and they got the wrong man mad and jealous and he wanted to kill him. They were singing a song and dancing said amen Saul has killed his thousand but David whoo, has killed his 10,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Saul couldn't go up against Goliath, but David went up against Goliath. Saul couldn't defeat Goliath, but David, hallelujah, defeated Goliath. When they start singing them, them songs, sometimes people get jealous. <laughs> 
And so Saul purposed that he was going to kill David. He threw a javelin at him and tried to kill him and he pursued him and tried to kill him and he had in mind to kill him because he was jealous of him. David got more praise than Saul. So David had to flee to a man, a place of refuge, hallelujah. So he decided that he would go into the land of the Philistines, hallelujah, hallelujah. In 1 Samuel 21 and 10, it said David arose and fled that day for the fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gad. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands? And David his 10,000. Number 12, David laid up these words in her heart and he became afraid of Achish, the king of Gilead. Hallelujah. So he worked out a plan. I don't know whether he came up with this plan in his own mind or whether God inspired him to act crazy like you ain't got no sense. And you might be able to escape from a kish. Hallelujah. But he changed his behavior before them and he feigned or he pretended himself mad in their hand. He scribbled on the doors of the gate. He let spittle fall down from his beard. Hallelujah. Says, surely this man is crazy, but he wasn't crazy because he was afraid that this man was going to kill him, so he pretended that he was crazy. But David had good sense. Hallelujah. The Lord, I'm sure, influenced him to show him the way to get out of the situation. If he left a man a kish, Saul would kill him. If he stayed with a kish, a kish would kill him. Hallelujah. He said, I got to figure out something, hallelujah. And the Lord said, pretend like you're a madman, hallelujah. Let this man think you're crazy, but you're not really crazy, but let him think you're crazy and uh, let some spittle come out of your mouth and uh, start scribbling on the doors of the gate. Hallelujah. Then a case said unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I in need of madmen that ye have brought this fellow to play, to play, to play? <laughs> he didn't fool him. He said he's playing this out. He's playing a part. This is an actor. Heart, he's playing out as though he is mad. Hallelujah. Why have you brought him into my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Hallelujah. Shall I let him in my house? Shall I leave him in my house? Hallelujah. But God used this madness or pretended madness of David to give him a way of escape. Hallelujah. He let him go. I said he let him go. 
because he thought he was mad. But the Lord used this madness to free David from being killed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he got away from him and when he found out that he was delivered from him, he went back to Psalm 34 and he began to say what he said when he got away from a kiss. He said, he said, <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times. I'm not going to let a day go by where I do not praise him. I, I'm not going to let an opportunity go by where I don't give my testimony and let everybody know what he done for me. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. I don't know how I got away without them catching me, but I got out of the hand of Saul and I ran to a cage and I got out of the hands of a cage and I'm so glad I did. I know it was the Lord that delivered me. I know it was the Lord that brought me out and I'm going to thank him with some praise in my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't have to get the praise team out. I'm going to praise him anyhow. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for me, my soul automatically cries out, Hallelujah. Praise God. I said, Praise God for saving me. Hallelujah. 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 My soul will make her boast in the Lord. I have nothing to boast about, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Please, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Don't let me be by myself. Am I the only one who has been brought out? Am I the only one who has escaped death? Am I the only one who got the victory over my enemy? Am I the only one that God has delivered by his power? Am I the only one? Thought there was somebody else that might want to praise him. I thought there was somebody else that might want to enlarge his territory. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Zion, let us lift up and exalt his name together. He's been too good to set on him. He's been too good to stay in your seat. He's been too good to act like ain't nothing happened. Woo. Oh. Magnify him with me. Magnify him with me. Clap your hands and give him some praise. Masa hilara masa, Korea masa tabo hushia. I love him. I love him because he delivered me. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Verse 4, and he delivered me from all of my fear. That was a close call. Ooh, shut up. Close call. 
Saul almost got me. And then the way Keith was talking, I knew he had something in his heart and said I was playing mad. They almost got me. But the Lord, <laughs> oh, the Lord delivered me. Not only from them, but from my fears. I was afraid. Now I'm not afraid anymore because my faith has overcome my fear. He not only promised me deliverance, but he gave me deliverance. He not only promised me that he was going to bring me out, but he did bring me out. Hallelujah. He delivered me <laughs> from all my fears. And then David said there was other people too who looked unto him and were lightened. Their faces became the same way. They were not ashamed of trusting in God. He brought them out as well. In the last verse that I read in the beginning, this poor man cried. Not this rich man cried or this king cried, but this poor man cried and the Lord heard him. And he saved him out of all of his troubles. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I don't know what your testimony is today, but I know that there should be quite a few testimonies in this room. of how that you trusted in the Lord and he delivered you. Of how you were in close situation where it looked like the wrong thing was going to happen. Maybe you might, I might have even died or been wiped out. Them guns look pretty big when somebody got one up in your face. Saying, if you don't get out of my face, man, I'm going to blow you away. But some of us have been saved from guns and knives and murder. You're still here today because of the promises of deliverance. God promised that he would bring us out. God promised that he would deliver us. But when he delivers you, don't sit on your testimony and act like he ain't done nothing for you, but tell everybody about how good he really is. Tell them if you want to know somebody that is really, really good and wonderful and awesome and great, I can, oh, Thomas, I can introduce you to a man high and to a God who is able to bring you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Y'all ought to be feeling pretty good by now. The cries of the righteous are heard by God. I'll say that again. The cries of the righteous are heard by God. 
Psalm 34 and 15 said, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, where is God? I was really sick last night. Where was God? He was listening to your prayer. His eye was looking in your bedroom and looking down on you as you suffered or as you went through your situation. Hallelujah. And you might have felt like he was real far away, but he was there. all the time. He is omnipresent all the time. In good situations, he's there, but you don't pay as much attention to him as you do when you're having problems and difficulty. But he's there all the time. He told me one time, every prayer you pray, I hear it. Now, that ain't saying he's going to do something with it. But he said, I heard it. Your prayers have come up before me. And if you look in the book of Revelation, you will find that he has stored all of our prayers in golden vials in the temple. Every prayer that you have prayed, every prayer that I have prayed, his ears, he don't have ears, but his ears are open or his listening is open to our cry. And the face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. 17, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Now, I know Zion knows this, but for you that may not read the Bible a lot or don't understand the Bible's home hermeneutics. Anytime you see ETH on the end of a word, it means more than one time. Was it God heard me on Monday? No, he heard you on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, God delivered me Sunday. Well, he delivers Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. He is continually taking care of the needs, not only of the people of this church, but of other churches and in his world he is taking care of the righteous in a special way now let me share you this, this, this with you we got a lot of sickness that's going around right now but I believe I believe that we should follow the CDC guidelines. I believe in social distancing. But I believe in a God who has let some people come in contact with the COVID-19 virus but never got sick. Because God heard their prayer. And because God promised to deliver them, 
not with a vaccine, but by his own power to create his own antibodies. Uh, Y'all, you really have to stretch out on faith to believe a lot of things I'm saying. But I've watched it for a whole year and a half, and I'm still watching it now. The hallelujah, the Delta variant that came through, the other variant that came through. They think that vaccinations is the thing that will kill it, but the one who after really has to get rid of it is God himself. So why, brother preacher? He's the one that sent it. to get everything the way he wanted it to be. And don't get me started like I was last week. People have refused to listen to God. They refuse to do what God said. Won't read the Bible, won't pray until they need something. They get in ICU and then they want him to save them. Don't, don't get me started, please. But I'm telling the truth. But those who serve God, those who are righteous in the eyes of God, those that are holy, those that pray, those that fast, those that walk with God every day and ask for his guidance and ask for his help and ask for his healing and ask for his deliverance, and ask for his protection. He hears them every day and maybe many times you think you had it, but the next day you don't have it. You had it when you woke up, but you don't have it now. Hallelujah. I had a pain in a certain place and when the service started and the saints began to pray that the Lord would have his way, it went away. Now I feel better now. Hallelujah. He heareth us and he delivereth us out of all. Do you hear what I said? All of our troubles. How many in this congregation have been brought out this week? Just raise your hand. All of my troubles all of my heartaches, all of my burdens, all of my worry. He brought me out of all of them. Hmm. Hmm. He has a perfect record, people of God, and he has never failed any of us yet. So God didn't come when I called him. Well, maybe he wants to make you call a little longer. Well, I had this problem and I really got in earnest and I was down on my knees and I was calling on God. Oh God, please. Oh God, please. And it seemed like I couldn't hear him. Well, are you righteous? Is your soul right with God? <laughs> are you doing what you should do? Are you doing it the way that it should be done? He is giving us a blank check. He said, call on me and I will answer you. Call on me and I will deliver you. Call on me and I will deliver you not from just some trouble, but from all your trouble. Financial 
trouble. Job, trouble. Sickness, trouble. Grandchildren, trouble. <laughs> I feel good in my soul. 18 said the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. And he saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. All he wants us to do is to humble ourselves before God. He wants us to bow down and worship him. He wants us to surrender and worship him. And if we've done wrong, he wants to tell him, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't keep your word. I'm sorry that I committed sin. I'm sorry that I did the wrong thing. Please, please, please forgive me, Lord, for what I've done. And he don't look at all them tears coming down and handkerchiefs and tissue people got trying to wipe your eyes and your nose and all. He don't look at that. Anybody will cry if you cut onions up in front of them. And there is crocodile tears too. I ain't crying because hallelujah of what I've done, but I'm crying because you caught me and I couldn't get away. <laughs> and those that have the broken heart, the contrite heart, and the contrite spirit, he will save them. He will receive them and he will help them. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now anytime you see B-U-T in a verse, it means their whole situation changes direction. I have many affliction. I am troubled by many afflictions, but the promises of deliverance will change my situation. Hallelujah. The word promises means a statement that God will do something for us. And that not one of his good promises has ever or will ever fail. I can say with full authority today that we can rest and stand upon the promises of God because they will never, ever, ever let us down. Hallelujah. And we should read them in the Bible and examine them and take them to heart and believe them because promises 
are a basis for expectation. If God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. No argument, no controversy. Lord, I'm going to look for what you promise to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deliverance is to set free from things that are bothering us, such as afflictions, sickness, oppression, burdens, troubles, doubts, fears, etc., etc., etc. God has promised us deliverance. And I like words, and I hope you bear with me. These are the, just the definitions. Deliverance also means to send to an intended destination. Hallelujah. So what that don't sound like very much, but what God does, he separates us from the things that are bothering us and he sends them to another destination. <laughs> I had it, now I don't have it. I was in it, but now I ain't in it. I was hurting, but now I feel well. I was down, but now I'm up. What happened? God sent it to another destination. and said, let my people go free. Hallelujah. He said, let my people go free. Hallelujah. There are promises also in 2 Timothy 3, 11 through 12. Verse 11 says, persecutions afflictions came unto me at, Ico at Antioch and at Iconium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, this is Paul talking, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Not David, but this is Paul. Verse 12, yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Everybody that I'm preaching to here and abroad is going to run into some kind of persecution which is basically harassment and affliction. Hallelujah. Nobody is immune from it, from the pulpit to the door. But <laughs> he shall deliver them out of them all. Hallelujah. Isn't that all right? There's a promise in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. The Bible said, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devil. Hallelujah. 
I'm sorry. These signs shall follow that them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up servants, serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Last line. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall, shall is a promise. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But do you all believe this? But do you all believe this? I'm serious about what I'm going to say because we're going to have a special thing we're going to do after I get done doing all this preaching. We're going to ask everybody, as soon as I get done reading this next scripture, we're going to ask everybody in this congregation who has an affliction or is being afflicted, or a sickness, or something else that they would like to be healed from. We're going to ask you to stand. Now this isn't, this isn't, we're not going to bring everybody down because of social dissonance. But I want you to stand because the Lord laid it on my heart to pray for all of you that you will be healed. Woo, Shana. I stand in his place today. I stand in the pulpit today, hallelujah, representing the God of heaven. Mana Kolosha, who is able to heal every sickness. He's able to heal every disease. There's no thing that he cannot move out of the way. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but he will deliver them out of them all. James chapter 5, verse 13 through 15. Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. If there's any merry, let him sing songs. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. <laughs>